All right, I've been having a lot of trouble lately with Snagit and what is the other one? Camtasia. I love TechSmith software, longtime fan, but it feels to me like it's every year there's a bug that just doesn't get resolved until the next year, but then another bug pops up. I don't know, big, big thing, but big, big uh, first word problems, I guess. But one thing I keep running into is uninstalling the software cleanly is a pain. It doesn't happen. There's DLL files left over. There's just things that don't go away, and I can never fully uninstall it. So guess what I did? I wiped my computer. I have no screen capture software. I have no screen uh, recording software at the moment other than OBS, which is the only way I'm able to record this, me downloading a new software. So I'm going to try this one called A Shampoo Snap 15. I was just Googling around and came up with it. So let's see how, you know, see what it's like. So here we are. I downloaded the exe file here. This is for a shampoo snap, and I'm going to launch it. Let's open the file. Did I click it? I don't know. I always do this with setup files. I'll click it in the browser. There we go. And then I will think I didn't click it. Click it again, and then I got two setup files running. So yes, I did click it. Um, license key. Let's get past this part, and I'll be back. Well, that setup could not have been easier. I like this method. Paste in a CD key or product key, if you will. It um, shows you my age. And click Next. And it accepted the key. I installed it. And here we are. Now, I never like to launch. This is just me. I never like to launch from the setup installer itself because it was elevated to admin permissions. I want to make sure it's able to launch from my active user account. Now, this is just the IT administrator support guy in me, I guess. But let's click Finish, and then they say, I mean, look at the price. This is so reasonable for some screen-grabbing software. Even if it was just, you know, like sni uh, snipping tool for Windows, that's, that's a really reasonable price. So this is a flash sale that's going on. You can buy this as well. And I'm going to give you an honest review because I use expensive software. I do. I, I've used Snagit. I've used, oh, gosh, um, what's the other one? So it's a, there's one on Apple, on Mac OS. Um, you know, I've spent like 40 bucks here, 80 bucks here, 100 and something there. Camtasia, I've spent probably 300 on that. Just It just adds up. And again, no shade to them, to um, TechSmith. They have awesome support behind their software and great tutorials. But I want something that's just simple and a little bit lean will go <laughs> or the support forums or whatever. But... I'm really excited to use it because I just clicked it to launch it, and there's just this little, you know, what do you call it, auto-hiding widget up here that lets you do a, a scan screen. Let's try scan screen and see what that does. Oh, cool. That just means like a selectable area. So let's try it. So far, so smooth. I like that. Full screen selection, reset. So I just selected an area, right? Now I can click on, oops, sorry, I moved away from the mic. Click Eclipse. Let's, oh, it's got like a, that's cool. You can do like a little different area. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's cool. Oh, nice. The editor is very clear and perfect for my resolution. I'm running this at 1080p. Nothing major like 4K. This monitor I'm on can do f uh, 4K. It is a 4K monitor. But I like to run things at 1080 when recording. So I can select different areas of my three monitors. Oh, so cool. There's my three monitors. I, ca I can select them all. And it stitched them all together perfectly. This is neat. Um, the scrolling back and forth, I'm recording in 60 frames and, you know, I guess I'm using up some computer resources, also using an audio interface, and everything's running fine. This is a good sign. So I can rotate it. Don't know why anybody would want to do that with a wide image like that, but you can do it. Let's see what the transformation uh, option is. Let's do this. And I can just click Save. Okay, cool. So oh, let's go back to this transformations and go to crop. I want to crop to here. Boom. Everything's really nice and easy to, you know, it's got good contrast. So that's really nice. Uh, cropping a photo is easier than in green shot. I'll already tell you that. Uh, okay, so what we need to do now is just dig into the options. So most of these sc screen, <laughs> I can't talk, most of these screen capture type tools have some sort of taskbar process running. And also, we need to check, why is my headphone, they're, they're quieter now, that's weird. But they also 
tend to eat up a lot of RAM. So what I did here was open up Task Manager and filter down to Snap, and we can see that it has 79, 70, 63, 40. It's got quite a few tasks running, but collectively it's not that huge. It's a couple hundred megabytes, right? So, or a little bit over that, but it's not. that's not bad. I mean, you got Edge right here. I have literally one, <laughs> one, two, three, two. It's using a gig and a half of my memory. Because, yeah, I got extensions running and stuff like that, but that's that's ridiculous, right? So we're not using up a ton of memory in modern terms. Uh, it would be cool to see how this runs in Linux and see how much it used, but, it, you know, I don't know how it runs in Linux because I don't think there is a version for Linux. But let's close this and actually check the taskbar area. And here it is. We'll right-click. Capture all screens, scan screens, capture freehand selection, screen color picker. It's got a lot of cool tools built in. I don't have to run power tools to get the screen color picker. It's it's built into this. That's a nice one. It's got OCR. Wow. In a $15 program. I mean, that's pretty impressive. I'm getting a Facebook message. Uh, record video. Very cool. I'll have to check that out. And it's got a video editor. Oh, wow. You don't get that in Snagit. You do not. You get that in Camtasia. But, I mean... We'll see what video editor is, if it's just in, you know, finger quotes. I wonder how good it is, but that's pretty cool for an affordable product. So what I want to try one more time is going to the scan screen function and just selecting an area. I was a little bit confused on once I release, if I press enter, okay, yeah. So I press enter just to confirm. Let's see what kind of clip art it has. So, wow, it has similar looking clip art to what I would have in something like Snagit. It's got a bunch of flags. This is cool. I like how it's got a lot of clip art right here. And this install didn't feel that massive. It's not like pulling these from the internet because they're already cached. They're, they're here. This is sweet. I really like this. I'm becoming a fan. I, might, I don't know if I'm going to install Snagit again. And I feel like, why did I renew my, my membership for this year? Because now, oh, I bought this and this is just, oh wait, no, this actually, I did, full disclaimer, I got this for free, but also it's on sale for 15 bucks. You can't beat that. That's pretty cool. So let's uh, put a banana here. You know, you can kind of dress things up and you can go to file. Let's see what kind of options we have to export. Oh, cool. So I can export the image and you can save as JPEG, PNG, the, you know, the ones I need. A shampoo web. Let's check that out. Oh, so very similar to what you see with TechSmith. They have like a little file server set up where you can upload something and share it. I'm becoming a fan, man. This is really cool. I, yeah, sorry if I sound like a little kid. You know, you know what? I'm not sorry. This is, this is really neat. I'm excited. I, I don't know why I've never heard of this until I kind of dug around in Google and Bing for some different screen capture tools. And once I got on that, you know, spree of doing that, I found this and I feel like, Everything that's requested nowadays and for the last 10 years was, has been Snagit for doing screen grabs. And I never understood it because of how sometimes it, to me it feels a little clunky and it feels a little slow. This feels really snappy. And the name is proper because it's Snap15. Okay, there's something else I want to try. I want to do another screenshot. I'm a big screenshot guy. I'm obsessed with screenshots. I feel like I need them for documentation all the time. I need them for, uh, you know showing somebody a quick tip or trick it's it's useful for that right so i'm going to click scan screen again and now i'm going to click and drag part of this website and then i'm just going to click in the center of it oh so that works as well i didn't have to hit um enter like i did last time so i don't know what i did there let me try that one more time did we find a bug did we find a bug here we go this could be it uh if i go back up here and i do a Grab, click in the center. Okay, maybe you're supposed to just hit enter. Let's try it one more time. Uh-oh. I think I, I think I uh, did something to it. Let's see. Okay, let's see if this works. If I go to take a screenshot and just click in the center of the screenshot. It does. Okay. So I don't have to press enter. I should probably read the instructions. That would be really useful. But it also kept other ones here that I did earlier, which is something familiar to me from Snagit. 
so I can delete the photos here. In Snagit, I tend to right click and go to delete. Oh, this has it too. They're like called projects here. Okay, very cool. Now, let's see, does it have a blur tool that's decent? It's got strength, let's see. Oh yeah, that's cool. I tend to turn the strength up because AI can kind of see through blurring effects. There we go, something like that looks cool. And we could do pixelate, oh that's cool. It's like a mosaic or something. Oh, that's that's pretty pretty funky. Um, let's turn the strength to ten. See what that looks like. Oh, that's cool. I like that uh, mode. So you can like draw, draw over it. Okay, yeah, that's kind of cool. Very neat. Now, one area I have not checked out yet is one I'd like to do first, usually in any program, and that is settings. Let's see what kind of settings they offer us. Start with Windows. Okay, I will do that. Dark mode, no, I'll just use whatever system setting I'm using. And show splash screen on startup, no thanks. I like that that's an option to turn off. Show error log on crashes, yes, I did have one crash. Now, I just fresh installed Windows. I don't know if I have every driver updated because I just updated the GPU, uh, the NVIDIA driver. And that could be my fault. So I would assume it might work a little bit better on an Intel chipset but we'll see. Um, I'll try on like my other, uh, my laptop. But anyways, you got monitor browsers for images copied to memory and open them in Snap. I don't want to monitor browsers. Uh, maybe that'll free up some memory. Let's go to save. And then let's actually check the memory. So that did not free up any memory doing that, so it doesn't seem to have an impact, but still, again, way less than Chrome, or uh, Edge, Chrome, whatever, same thing. Got about 363 megs of memory used up because I also have a project going here now where I can add things to that I'm assuming let's see what can I do to that project if I right click on it or click on it yeah you can add, you can go back and you know mess with it that's cool so then if you go to save as save project that's cool I like that so it's saved and I feel a little more safe if it was to crash some other programs you would just lose all your shit <laughs> so let's keep going here with the uh, settings I'm gonna go back there Okay, so we're back here in the settings, and you can see that I just clicked on Configure News. And it gives you options to turn off all of the spam, basically. And I say that because I get that from Snagit, from TechSmith, in my Snagit app along the top border, and it's very annoying. It's like, okay, I paid for the yearly renewal. I don't need any news. I know what the news is. So I like to turn all these off except for the program updates, which could include security features and patches or whatever. So let's keep that on. Click Close. Show my A shampoo. I'm guessing that's... Oh, license support, register program, cool. And support version, that's cool. And then I would save that, right? But let's go to screenshot. Play shutter sound when capturing. No, let's turn that off. I don't need that. Display zoom window at cursor position. Okay, all these are really useful. You can put some variables in here for the output file name. I love that. Now that's very powerful. And I could, you know, tinker that, tinker, <laughs> tinker, tinker with that later. Uh, when you take a new screenshot, open the editor. I like that because I'll either do open it in the editor or copy to clipboard if I'm doing a lot of support um, support sessions or when I want to demonstrate something for somebody. It's cool to have those options. You can open it in another app. That's great. I don't know if I have that in my other screenshot apps. Hotkey. So I'm going to mess with this and do away with having to click this widget up here. And my idea of using a screenshot tool is just to have a screenshot key that's not print screen but maybe something like F9 or F12 or something like that and this is really neat extract text from screenshot so there's an OCR keyboard shortcut that's interesting let's change that to O see how easy that is uh, alt control O um, alt how do you do it? you click in there well that's easy enough and let's go to toolbar Display toolbar at the edge of your screen. So if I uncheck that, does it go away? Not until I click save. Okay. Show touch gripper. Let's go left. You can change it to the left, the right. Okay, really nice. I don't want to put it on the right because of the scroll bar. I think the top that they picked is the best one for me. Uh, tool tips on hover? No. Editor, here we go. Main display, save projects, and close editor after copying a screenshot to the clipboard. So the editor we can bring up on, oh, that's so nice. You can actually pick the actual display by your number. And this is my main display where it's been displaying. I can change it to offsides where I want to do the edits. That's really good for 
if you're doing this a lot and you use your monitors in a certain order that you're comfortable with, this is a really important setting actually. I'm, I'm digging this. It's simple and stays out of the way. Um, select an app to open PSD files, delete show. So I'm not going to mess with this. Um, I, I don't want to delete anything per se. I'll just assume it's still there on the clipboard or whatever. So this is really cool. I will give this a, I would say, 8 or 9 out of 10, as long as it doesn't crash anymore. I mean, it happened once, but again, that could be from my driver updates. Going to test this on another computer, actually, after I deactivate it on here. I'll have to check their licensing terms. I don't know how many machines you can run it on with the CD key, but I'm going to test that out, and I will write that in my final review on my website, randyhanley.com, if you're not reading it there already. Thanks for watching.